One one of the reasons that I believe <clears throat> that we're probably get, gotten to a point of no return right now. First of all, anything ungodly we permit it. This is a country that permits and promotes the most ungodly things. That's number one. And when you have a country or a society or a household or anything else that promotes nothing but ungodliness, what could possibly come out of that that's positive? I don't care if you put a nice fancy name on it. You can call it gender uh, surgery assignment. You, 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 can, you can talk about uh, the, 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 the type of debauchery that goes on in Washington, D.C. These thieves get on TV and lie about spending your money. What are we spending in Ukraine now? What are we spending? 50, 60 billion? I, I didn't lost count how much money they sent over to Ukraine. And every time you go outside, every city you're in, you go around, you see homelessness. You see people who have mental problems. I'm not talking about nobody who's able to work. I'm saying I see people on a daily basis. If I go somewhere on a daily basis, I see people out here under the bridges, on the streets that has mental illness. Now, why is our country sending money over to Ukraine? Why is our country importing a bunch of illegals when we have so many mentally challenged people in this country? Not just, we got veterans, we got elderly, but we got regular people who's mentally challenged. I'm telling you, I see them all the time. I meet them all the time. I feel sympathy for them. My heart's break for these people because you can tell when you talk to them, you can just tell that they're not all together there. We got billions of dollars to give to Ukraine. <clears throat> we give Pakistan money. Every country we give almost give money to. And then on top of on, on top of us giving all this money to these other countries, we have our borders wide open. We're bringing illegals over here. And if they come to the hospital, we'll let them have a baby and the taxpayers picks up the fee. While you're struggling, while you worked all your life, your family worked all your life, your grandparents worked all your life, you put in all this money, all this money in, 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 in sweat, blood, and tears you put into this country, and it's being given away by filthy, corrupt, ungodly politicians. That's a fact. This country is suffering from a bunch of ungodly leaders, but the only reason these ungodly leaders are in charge, guess why they're in charge? Because the people has permitted it. You get the kind of leaders that you deserve. This is a fact. You go throughout the Bible, the history of the Bible, every time they, all these corrupt kings they got, they, want, they wanted corrupt kings. They thrive out there because they can bribe it. When God was over them, they said, you know, we need our own king. Give us another king because we can't manipulate God Almighty. He said, here's Saul. And then all of a sudden they was wondering why they said, you didn't want God as your king. You wanted Saul. Here's Saul. We have allowed corrupt leaders on both parties, Republicans and Democrats. It ain't just one party corrupt. I, 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 see, I, I'm not one. You can argue that one party is more corrupt than the other one, but both parties are corrupt because the only way that you've had this type of, uh, I mean, just reckless spending, the only way you have allowed this kind of way the politicians goes to Washington D.C. When they go to Washington D.C., they're earning from. Eighty thousand to a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars a year. When they went to Washington D.C., some was worth. They weren't even millionaires. Some may have been millionaires when they went there. Say they were worth three million dollars when they went to Washington D.C. After they stayed there twenty years, only earning an average of about one hundred and seventy, one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. All of a sudden, they're worth fifty million dollars. Stacey Abrams, back in two thousand and eighteen, when she first ran. Her net worth was around $100,000. She was in debt. Her net worth now is around $5 million. She hasn't had held any public office. Now, you tell me how in the hell she, had, she don't own a business. She got these nonprofit things that she'd have raised money through her campaign, and they backdoored, and that's how she got rich. These Bernie Sanders fans, this is why I, I just loathe about the Bernie Sanders fans. Bernie Sanders has been in office. I don't know how long he's been in office. Him and Joe Biden has been in office. Joe Biden was in there a little bit longer than Bernie Sanders. But every time Bernie Sanders runs, these ignorant Bernie Sanders bros come on TV telling you how Bernie Sanders wants to do this. How has communism and socialism worked for other countries? Has it worked for China? Has it worked for Russia? It, it never worked. Venezuela, it never works. Cuba, never works. But these people would sit on here, feel the burn. We want what Bernie's selling. 
Well, how long has Bernie been in office? He ain't done a damn thing but get him and that Hilda B's wife of his rich. And you got these people who are so ignorant. And they keep talking about, pay for my college. Oh, we need to uh, re re make sure we pay off the, uh, the debts. Actually, we need to charge y'all more. Because y'all have been brainwashed at these colleges in the first damn place. How is it possible that somebody goes to college and Bernie Sanders fools them? I don't get this. I don't know how Bernie Sanders ever fooled anybody. It dumbfounds me that Bernie Sanders fools anyone. He has not accomplished anything. But every time he runs, they always says, vote for Bernie Sanders. Well, he's been in office how long? Why hasn't he fixed anything? He hasn't fixed a damn thing. But we, we have a society now. Now, Bernie Sanders is... Is, is, he's really an atheist. Even though they say he's Jewish, he don't believe in God, really. He doesn't. And we have a hostility towards the thing of God. Now, whether you agree with the founding fathers about everything, because some of the founding fathers was trash too, but most of the founding fathers were believers. At least they acknowledge that there has to be a belief in God. That's why in God we trust our, our own the money, even though we don't really trust him. But how is it possible that you're telling me that you were able to talk about God when you were founded? Now you're telling me that God is being kicked out of the school system and you're wondering why all of the hell is broken loose right now. You literally, when you kick God out of something, it's like you're saying, the, the room is clear for you, Satan, to come in now. Come on in, Satan, and make your dwelling place. And these people are so mixed up that they're trying to pollute the minds of children, having them cut off body parts. What kind of sick society are we in? These are the same folks that call evil good and good evil. And you think you can fix this? It's spiritual warfare. It is. Nobody likes to say it because, first of all, they're not spiritual enough to even talk about spiritual warfare. Because they're not spiritual. Saying Jesus' name, even quoting some scripture, reading the Bible does not make you spiritual. None of, most of the people are not led by the Spirit. How are you spiritual? You're not led by the Spirit. But what gets me is though, God is not welcome, but any other trash is welcome. And why is it that the, the, the music industry and the movie industry, they will let out all kind of trash. They, they pollute the, the airwaves, the radio stations with pure filth. All of the social media platforms do this. But if you come on and speak truth, if you come on and, and say that this is what I believe and this is what thus says the Lord, oh my God, he's narrow-minded. Get him off there. This is hate speech. This filth that you guys were allowing on there, you didn't consider that hate speech, right? Because everybody wants to be liked by others. I want to be popular like the little girls in school. This is Donald Trump's problem. This is most politicians' problems. They give a damn about the world lacking them. They care about what the world thinks about them. Do you care about what God thinks about you? I just never understood people are so caught up on somebody, what somebody else thinks about them. I, I, I don't get it. The older I get, the less I get that. First thing I ask them, does that person take care of you? I can understand you being concerned if the person takes care of you. Maybe you have to watch some things, but is that person taking care of you? Oh, somebody online says something about you, so and what? What does that even mean? They've been saying some of the nastiest things you can say about anybody about me for the last 10, 11 years. Think I care? Did that change anything I said? No. You got to have a healthy fear of God Almighty. See, I fear God way more than I fear any individual. I don't care how powerful they are, rich they are, how strong they think they are, whatever. I fear God Almighty because like this, he can take them all out if he wants to. Like this, it doesn't take nothing. They think they're in charge of something. Cut off the oxygen just like that. How many people died last year who thought they were strong and powerful? There's a bunch of them going to die this year too who think they're strong and powerful. No matter how smart you think you are, no matter how powerful you think you are, you have a limited amount of days you're going to be living on this earth. You're checking out sooner or later. And guess what? After death, there is a judgment. After death, you don't just cease to exist. I don't care what the atheists say. I don't care what, these, what the Catholic Church say about purgatory. When you die, it ain't going to be no, I get a second chance. Ain't no second chances. Your second and third and fiftieth chance is why you're still breathing the oxygen that God Almighty has put in the atmosphere. But these folks, same folks, they hostile towards me or they hostile towards somebody else that won't tolerate their foolishness and call it narrow mind. Call me narrow mind. I don't care. 
I'm I'm too old to be worried about if I hurt somebody's feelings or if they didn't agree. I don't really care. Can you prove to me anything I said that was that was not something based on the word of God? Like if I'm if I'm against a certain action or a certain thing, well, prove it to me then. Because you want me to agree with these filthy politicians who like to be liked so much. I never seen so many grown ups who's rich and powerful and they just want people just to like them so much. You're immature. See, that's a person that's immature and not very spiritual because I don't see why you're bending all over backwards for somebody who's never going to like you anyway. If you got to change everything about you in order to make that person like you, you cease to be who you are. And I'm not telling you to be a jackass. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying if the only way a person is going to like you, if you got to conform to everything they say and believe in, they don't like you. They like who they want you to be. They want to reprogram you and rebuild you. Remember the $6 million man? We can rebuild him. Lee Majors, we can rebuild him. They want to rebuild, rebuild you, reprogram you, teach you how to think, teach you what to think, to teach you what, you, what to say. They don't want you. They don't want you to be individuals. We have a whole society now of what we call non-individualism. It's offensive. God made everybody different. I don't care if they're identical twins. They still got some differences. Everybody has unique. It's like snowflakes. Everybody is different because God, he don't do the same thing over and over. He's designing. The designer, he just said, I'm going to design you different. And what gets me is that we have a society that says, we don't want, any, we don't want anything to do with the designer. <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. That's like trying to tell... Elon Musk, you don't need to be involved with Tesla no more. This is like trying to tell the um, Apple, we're going to take your products from you and not let you be able to put your name on any of your products anymore. They're the designer, right? It makes absolutely no sense. It's like telling the owner of a franchise that you're not able to wear any of the jerseys by the franchise that you own. I was watching some, me and my kids was watching some, I thought it was funny. It was some kind of uh, program. It was to all these different. In the technology that we have now, there's no way we couldn't stop people from coming across the border if you want to because there's too much te technology. They got electronic dolphins that can go. It's like stealth. You can't even tell it's in the water. They got all kind of like little drones so small, I mean, that you barely can't see it. They got so much technology, face recognition, everything else. If they wanted to stop crime, if they wanted to stop corruption, if they wanted to stop the illegals from coming over, if they wanted to arrest child molesters, they could have already done it already. That just proves how evil they are. I was looking at, we was looking at that, and I said, listen, look at all this technology. I kept telling them, I said, look at the technology they got. You telling me they can't stop this crime from going on with this kind of technology they got? It blows your mind, the technology that you see. If you look at some of these 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 technology programs <clears throat> and they show you all the technology that they got, I'm saying, well, I'm done with the conversation. It proves that the government is not interested in fixing any problems because they got all this technology that they can do anything they wanted to do. If they wanted to stop crime, they could. If they wanted to stop the, the war on drugs, they could stop the drugs from coming over. They don't want to stop the drugs from coming over, damn it. Just like if they wanted to stop the pharmaceutical companies from putting, pushing out all this trash right now, they could do it, but they don't want to do it. Because there is no money in the cure. This is a fact. This is why they bring these politicians like Anthony Fauci. He's nothing but a politician. He's not a real doctor. He's not an infectious uh, disease expert. He's nothing but a, a, a politician stool. And he comes out and he's, he's, he's nothing but like the whore for China and anybody else who pays him. This is, our, this is what our society has been reduced to. Technically speaking, this is what society really has been reduced to. The highest bidder. No matter... These doctors, some of these doctors will say in anything, they will promote things that they know is not healthy if they're going to get paid enough money. Politicians will let their own children, the mother, the father, the wife, whoever else, be destroyed because of money. These people are so corrupt and they're so evil. And see, once you recognize what evil is, don't start trying to call evil something else. Recognize what evil is. You got to look evil in the face. Don't be trying to sugarcoat it. I don't care if it's your family, I don't care if it's your friend, I don't care if it's your favorite politician, actor, whoever it is. You got to call a spade a spade. That's evil. The things that these people are justifying, I don't care how nice they say it. I don't care how they want to say They seem so friendly, they're of the devil. The devil seems friendly too. Hath God said Eve? 
You think the devil comes and says, I'm a big bad wolf. I want to destroy you. No, uh-uh. Just like child molesters pretend like they're the kid's friends. They're not going to just come out. The devil's not going to come up and say, I'm the big bad wolf. I want to kill you. He pretends just like these slick, silver-tongued politicians come on TV telling you that they want to go to Washington, D.C. They want to fight for the American people. My constituents makes me want to throw up. My constituents. Are you freaking kidding me? You've been in office for 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years. You haven't done a damn thing. And you talking about you care about the American people. You've ran the debt up to 30 trillion if we are to believe what they're actually saying. Everything they've actually practiced has been destroyed. They want me to believe. This is why I never believed in climate change. I don't even have to look at the facts. The reason I don't believe in it is because I know damn well that the government is pushing it is not true. Everything they push is a lie. Anytime the government tries to scare you, you can rest assured that it is a lie. The government is known for lying to you. It's what they're good at. They're the best liars ever. And no matter how much they lie to people, people keep saying, well, I heard an expert says this. You are a fool. There ain't no teaching a fool. See, a fool gets mad when you correct them. Correct a fool, make an enemy. They don't like you correcting them because they like them being stupid and ignorant. They do. So fools like being. See, that's why the Bible says a fool says in his heart there is no God because fools like being fools. And they'll get mad when you correct them too. You want to make an enemy, correct them and point out some facts or whatever. They'll hate you. And you don't even know why that person hates you, but they hate you. You better wake up. And, and, and until people start waking up and being able to identify who the enemy is, being, being able to identify that these people are not your friends. If a person consistently, uh, consistently sides with evil people, calling evil good and good evil, do you really need to have an analysis on if the person is evil? Because you just said it was brilliant. So they're siding with evil people. So how can you turn around and say that these people are good? I don't care how pretty she is. I don't care how smart he is. I don't care how handsome he is. I don't care how rich and powerful. I don't care how many companies they built. It doesn't make a difference to me. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. And when you start calling wrong, right, there's a lot of rich people that's, that, that has absolutely no scruples whatsoever. You do know that, right? Just about all your politicians have no scruple, but there's a lot of rich people who have zero scruples whatsoever. They'll do whatever to be successful, business deal, whatever you name, they'll do it. But you got the, the population of the world in every country you go to, UK, France, Germany, America, Russia, China, you just name it. At least the Chinese over there, they're trying to fight now because now they're sick of the communist government. So why don't we just drop off AOC and Bernie Sanders and the rest of these communists who went to college, who they like communists, drop them off in China. Or drop them off in Venezuela if they like socialism so much. And did you see where the Biden administration is saying that Venezuela, they can now drill? This is a question I love to ask these, these, these tree huggers. Why is it acceptable to drill in Venezuela? Is it acceptable to drill in the Middle East? But we can't drill over here. It's one earth, fool. No, that earth is not close to Uranus or Mars or anything else. It's one earth. If they're going to get rich in Venezuela, if they're going to get rich in Saudi Arabia, damn it, let us get rich over here. That doesn't make any sense. This is why you know their purpose is trying to destroy us. Because why would you say you can drill over there? At least wait till your green programs are working before you shut down everything else. Now they say, hell no, we ain't going to do that. Because they want you to suffer. And these people are suffering and they're still defending these people. They're brain dead. Why would I be suffering and you're the cause of my suffering? And then you can come on TV and say, Joe Biden comes on TV and says, no administration has done more than this administration. He's correct. No administration has done more to destroy your rights and destroy this country than the Biden administration. Not even close. <clears throat> he sleep at the hems anyway. He don't even know what's going on. That's the sad part about it. And people are listening to him. I just feel, I can't phantom how anybody could possibly be listening to Joe Biden at this point. I can't fathom how anybody can be saying he's doing a good job. Forget the media. Don't listen to social media. Don't even listen to me. If you want to know if Joe Biden is doing a good job, go to the store. Whatever store you want to. Go to the, uh, the, the grocery store. Then go to the electronic stores. Go to the gas pump. I know he says the, ad, the gas price is on the way back up. He released all those reserves or whatever, and they're trying to refill that right there. Don't let anybody fool you. Don't listen to me or nobody else. Just go to go do a shopping spree. Just go check the prices and stuff. And if you if you know the prices of stuff that was three years ago, four years ago, and then you say right now, you say he's doing a good job. Look at your electric bill. Look at your light bill. Look at your mortgage. Look at your rent. 
Look at your insurance. Anything you name, everything is up. How in the hell can you fix your mouth to say that he's doing a good job? You're brain dead. Because you're the kind of person that calls evil good and good evil because you don't have any sense. Because you don't want to offend someone. You might make somebody mad if you tell the truth. Another bootlicker. There's too many bootlickers. There's too many bootlickers reporting. There's too many big bootlickers will say anything not to offend somebody because this group is going to stop listening to me. If you stop listening to me because of facts, that's on you. I know where your destination will end up at. Because you don't want to listen because of facts. Now, you want me to lie and badmouth somebody when, when there's a lot. No, I'll badmouth them if it's true, but I'm not going to make up stuff on them. I can report the truth about Kanye West. If Joe Biden was doing anything good, I would report it, but he's done nothing good. But I, I say about Barack Obama, Barack Obama lied when he was running for office. Barack Obama was saying the right things the first time he ran for office. Barack Obama said he was for same, he was not for same-sex marriage. He was for traditional marriage. Barack Obama said that he, was, he wanted to uh, keep hope alive and make sure that everything was revealed. He wasn't going to hide everything. Everything was going to be open. Now, I knew he was lying because I went and looked him up and I already saw what he stood for. He was a queer. He said he was against same-sex marriage. He's getting long stroke. He said he was against uh, uh, the, the, this, this government that tries to control his people. He was a naked communist. His mom was a communist. His daddy was a communist. Everybody he hung around was communist. And he said he was against communism and, and, and violating people's rights. I knew that was a lie. He called himself a constitutional scholar, but I can't find one student that he ever taught. He was an exchange student. A according to his own record, he was adopted by uh, Mr. Centero while he was in Indonesia. He never became a citizen again. I don't see anywhere in the history. Show me a record where Barack Obama became a citizen again. Because once you become a citizen of Indonesia, when you come back, you got to file your citizenship. That's a fact. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me because you don't like facts. And you say he had no scandals. He's the illegal president. For eight years, the intel community allowed an illegal man to be in office. And you think that it's going to go well with you? He broke the law. He had a legal birth certificate. He wasn't even a damn citizen. I don't know where he was born at, but I know his birth certificate was fake. And I know he never filed to get his citizenship after he came back from Indonesia. So it's obvious that he wasn't a legal citizen. You can't trick me with this, the questions. Even if I left the birth certificate out, which I know that's fake. But somebody, nobody explained to me, show me in the record where he filed this right here and got his citizenships back once he came to back to America. It never fun. His horrid mama left, left him over there with another man in another damn country. Are you serious? The boy has been mixed up. He's completely mixed up. He's amoral to the core. And you got these dumbasses sitting around worshiping him, acting as if he did something. He didn't do a damn thing for eight years for you fools. And you got your phony pastors and stuff still put. Any pastor who support Barack Obama, I write them off as being uh, anti-God. As far as I'm concerned, any pastor who supports Barack Obama is anti-God in my book. Don't tell me how Christian you are. Don't tell me how saved you are. You don't know diddly squat. If you support Barack Obama, that man is anti-God. He's anti-Jesus. All he did was badmouth Jesus and the Bible. Never badmouth the moves. And shut up, stupid. You don't even have enough sense to even uh, make a great, a good argument. stuff so, Because you're not even a thinker. It's obvious Barack Obama don't know nothing about Jesus. It's obvious that Barack Obama was anti-God in the first place. He didn't even really a Muslim. He was, I don't know why he loved the Muslims so much, but he wasn't a practicing Muslim. Come on, it's a joke. He wasn't even a practicing Muslim his damn self. Are you serious? It's like people don't even want the truth. Then you tell them the truth, they get all fighting. What the hell is you mad for? You mad because I exposed your so-called uh, hero? Yo, down low here, bro, you mad at me? You a damn fool. You got something you want to tell me? You mad at the wrong person, damn fool. I've never seen so many people get mad about facts. You're mad at facts. When somebody brings up facts about Donald Trump, I don't say that wasn't true. Of course it's true. Just like when I said that Donald Trump paid the whore, the, the porn lady. I said he paid her. Don't give me this crap that he didn't pay her. Of course he paid her. Now, he paid the whore. Why are we still talking about it now? That was the agreement, right? That's what you do for whores, right? I'm lying. You already knew what was going on. Think about this. Melania was going on the Howard Stern show with Donald Trump. Why would Donald Trump even go on the Howard Stern show? Because he's not going to go on my show and start talking under my wife's dress and stuff like that. I'm going to punch you in the mouth. See, I, I never understood that. And she was going to the Playboy, uh, Playboy Banny, uh, Bunny uh, house with him and everything else. So let's not act like she's pure, pure driven snow. I know she was a model, so she took her clothes off for a living too. Let's stop that. Stop it. That's, we don't have to pretend. She's a great dresser. She knew how to keep her mouth closed. I give her that credit or whatever. 
Well, let's not stop acting like she's just pure as a driven snow or something like that. Come on. And let's just quit pretending like Donald Trump don't have bad judgment. He does. He's got bad judgment. <laughs> That's what happens when somebody's on spirit. He got real, really bad judgment. He got he does not know how to pick people. They 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 stroke his ego a little bit, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, he's bringing them in. It's ridiculous. And Anthony Samuch, Kamuch guy, he should have never uh, got brought that guy in. But that was Jerry Kushner, because Jerry Kushner is his son-in-law. You thought you can trust Jerry Kushner? I'd say he's a rat. He is a rat. It's a fact. Nobody wanted me talking about Jerry Kushner because he's Donald Trump's son-in-law. What does that say about you? Am, am I lying on Jerry Kushner? Was his was his daddy actually uh, arrested for being a, a, a criminal? Did did, did uh, 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 Chris Christie lock his daddy up? Then Donald Trump pardon his daddy? So stop it. I don't, I don't want to hear that. See, you got, you got poor judgment. A lot of things he do is just poor judgment. Actually, Ron DeSantos has better judgment than Donald Trump. I almost wish Donald Trump wasn't even in it. I, I really does. But as long as Donald Trump in it, DeSantos not winning. Let's, let's be, uh, can you be honest? I wish Donald Trump wasn't in it. I wish Donald Trump, I wish they hadn't cheated on Donald Trump because it would be the end of his presidency right now and then Ron DeSantos could have eased the reign. Because technically speaking, if you want to be technically honest, Ron DeSantos probably make a better candidate. So I know you don't want me to say it, but it's probably true because he don't have he don't have as much baggage. Uh, I think he knows how to pick people a little bit better. <laughs> he 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 usually thinks before he actually says something. So technically, he probably was a better candidate, but he's not going to win if Donald Trump is running. That's a fact. It's not. It's, it's just, I, I'm going to just keep it factual. That's a fact. There's no way in the hell the Ron DeSantis can win if Donald Trump is running. Period. That's all there is to it. Do you want winners or you want losers? 